County Manager's Presentation and Discussion Items 22-0691, Local Option Sales Tax Negotiations. Good afternoon. Um, we're at the halfway point in the uh, loss negotiations and want to provide you an update. Largely, this will be for the public because most of you, uh, you know, know these uh, issues uh, very well. Stylistically, the way we'll walk through this and Sharon Whitmore, the chief financial officer, is going to present it is really in prose, whole sentences. So if citizens want to review this subsequently and look at it, they'll have the ability to both uh, see a link to the video, but then also read the uh, read the presentation without without a lot of uh, problem. Um, the presentation really has three objectives: a clear overview of what lost is. Obviously, you know it's a sales tax jointly used by cities and counties to offset property tax uh, increases. Otherwise, that would be necessary to fund critical services. So, keep that in mind. It's negotiated each ten years post the census being done. Uh, we're in the middle of that now. It is a meaningful number. Over 300 million a year is generated from sales taxes uh, in Fulton County. Uh, and it does require the county's agreement as well as cities representing 50% of the population plus to uh, continue. So we're again midway through a process that will conclude by December the 30th. We're going to overview the offers that we've made because there's been some uh, perhaps misunderstanding of those or not uh, clarity. We did open uh, with 35 percent coming to Fulton County from today's 5 percent because that was a historical number that the county had enjoyed. But we did recognize and adjusted our offers that that would be difficult for the cities to get to overnight. So our three offers that we have just reinstated uh, to the cities with a, a letter that was sent on September the 8th are, I think, very compelling. They range in terms of what the county would collect over a 10-year period from 15 percent to 20 percent. One is a simple ramp up that goes from today's levels to above uh, 25 percent or so. Again, that nets us 15 percent, and Sharon will discuss that offer. Then the other two are quite uh, I think responsive to city needs. One guarantees them the amount that they're getting today for the full 10 year period. In other words, eliminating any concerns about increased property taxes or decreased services in the cities. The third one is a variation of that second one in that it in allows the cities not only to get what they get today, but also uh, share in the growth with the county over a period of time. And in a uh, with a current situation with economic outlooks very uncertain and the possibility of recession, either one of those guaranteeing city revenues would seem to be very compelling. I'm not sure and somewhat confused why 35 percent keeps being used by uh, either the news media or the cities, but that offer has not been on the table for some period of time. So we'll discuss the next steps with mediation starting this Friday. Again, we've had good discussions with our cities have met a number of times, and Sharon will talk about that. Um, what is the most, I guess, important thing about this presentation for the public to know is that we have identified very specific needs that are incremental in terms of our expenditures to what we spend today. We can see in the closure of the two AMC hospitals the importance of supporting public health. We all know that behavioral health follows right behind that, and we have some very significant expenditures there coming up in the creation of a behavioral health crisis center, probably multiple ones of those based on the uh, needs. And then today's meeting in particular underscored the importance of public safety with a jail that's quite frankly overflowing today, but then also in the future needs to be either significantly refurbished or replaced. And all of those, by the way, are, I think, unavoidable expenditures and importantly represent over 100 million or so a year in incremental expenses. So those expenses will either be dressed, addressed by a more equitable distribution of lost or by property tax uh, increases. So the negotiations are very important and hopefully uh, will again come to a successful conclusion 
by December. So Sharon's gonna share with you exactly the steps that we've gone through, the offers, and what's up next. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. Um, again, Sharon Whitmore, Chief Financial Officer for the county. Um, Mr. Anderson really covered uh, most of what is in the presentation, but I am gonna go ahead and step through it um, so that the, um, uh, the public is aware. Um, as, as he mentioned in his remark, his opening remarks, um, LOST is a 1% joint county and city sales and use tax. It was originally approved in 1975 and is subject to renegotiation um, every 10 years following the census. Um, in order to determine how the proceeds will be distributed among the county and its cities. Um, in Fulton County, um, for the county government itself, we use our lost proceeds to help um, offset and fund the cost of our countywide services that serve the residents of all 15 cities. Um, the primary purpose of local option sales tax is to provide property tax relief to county and city taxpayers. Um, currently, we have been receiving 4.98% of the current um, penny that we're, is associated with the local option sales tax, um, while the cities um, have been sharing in the balance, which is 95%. Uh, in the most recent fiscal year, uh, the county received $15.5 million of the total $316 million that was uh, collected countywide in local option sales tax. Although our collection percentage has been reduced since the initial uh, incorporation of cities began in 2006, we really um, have not experienced a reduction in countywide services. Um, the county's loss has been um, uh, deposited in the county's general fund um, and has been providing for the cost of services of the general fund. Um, all of our municipal type services, police, fire, parks, and recreation, all of those were being um, funded out of a special taxing district. And that's where we experienced the majority of our um, expense reduction as a result of incorporation. Um, and I, I believe the manager mentioned this as well, as uh, in order for the local option sales tax um, to continue after 2022, the county and cities representing more than 50% of the total city's population uh, must agree on a new distribution uh, certificate. Next slide, please. Commissioner Ellis, did you? Did, I mean, you had noted the 4.9, 8% that we are currently receiving, but uh, I didn't know if you wanted to amplify that, that this is not the amount that when the previous, when the last negotiations took place, that was not the amount that would the county agreed to and how it wound up at that number. That, that is correct. We ended at 4.98% um, really from a series of reductions that have been borne by the county for incorporation since 2006. Six, the last of which occurred with the incorporation of the city of South Fulton. Right. So the last negotiated agreement was what percentage? Um, it was 14 and some change, almost 15 percent. Yes. Okay. So the four, we didn't negotiate the 4.98. It came to that level in 2017. That's correct. As a result of the incorporation of the city of South Fulton. Next slide, please. Um, we wanted to try to. Um, show you graphically uh, you know what's been happening in Fulton County since 2006 in the upper left hand corner um, this graph shows what has what has happened with our local action our local option sales tax proceeds um, you can see it's very difficult to see and we have a larger um, sample of this in a subsequent slide but in uh, 2005, we were collecting over 72 million in um, local option sales tax proceeds while our population was um, in the 818,000 range. Um, you can see that over time, our sales tax collections have declined while population has increased um, up over uh, a million according to the 2020 census. During that same period of time, um, while the county's population increased 26% and our local option sales tax distribution declined 
80%, our countywide um, general fund budget um, really did not um, reduce as a result of incorporation. Our countywide service cost actually grew um, 23%. So incorporation um, really affected our special taxing district, not the county's general fund. Um, our local option sales tax as a percent of our general fund revenue during the same period of time decreased from uh, 10 per, representing 10% of total revenue to 2%. Um, our millage rate has been um, on a steady decline because um, to your credit as a board, you've worked diligently to reduce um, the county's share in the overall tax burden on taxpayers countywide. And on a per capita basis, um, the county is currently collecting about $64 less per person than it was in 2016, um, while we, we have a plan to spend $22 more. Uh, next slide, please. This slide is just a larger, um, more um, uh, clear view of that local option sales tax and population change slide. I think it's very um, evident that our population countywide has increased while our um, receipt of local option sales tax has decreased significantly. Next slide, please. Um, this is a larger version of the, uh, the um, financial data for the um, local option sales tax collections, the general fund bu budget, and our millage rate history, um, simply showing the steady decline of both local option sales tax and the millage rate um, while our uh, spending um, has, has increased. And also that um, to be able to um, continue to mitigate any property tax increases to support our, um, uh, our needs to meet countywide services, we really do need to um, collect more, have a greater percentage share of our local option sales tax. Next slide, please. So why is the county seeking um, a greater share of local option sales tax? Uh, we did uh, make this presentation to the cities um, in, I believe, the uh, second meeting that we had with them where we laid out for them uh, those uh, expense categories that we see on the horizon for the next 10 years predominantly in public health and public safety. Um, in that presentation, we identified the potential for about $950 million of additional expenses over 10 years. As the manager indicated in his um, opening comments, we've recently um, learned about the uh, two hospitals, the two other safety net hospitals in Fulton County that have plans for closure that will predominantly affect Central and South Fulton County. Um, as well as our partner, um, Grady Hospital, through the Fulton Cab Hospital Authority, has already um, indicated and uh, as part of our contract negotiations with them that they are seeking a significant increase in the annual support that we have been providing to um, Grady Hospital uh, for the support of indigent health care. Um, we have an increasing need for behavioral health um, services, behavioral health crisis services, and beds in Fulton County. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have, in fact, set aside a portion of our ARPA resources to um, try to make a dent in, in that need within the county. Um, as you heard from the sheriff earlier today, violent crime is on a rise, is on the rise in Fulton County. We're seeing that in the daily population and the length of stay at the county jail, um, which have both substantially increased since 2020. We have housing capacity issues that have to be addressed as well as staffing increases um, that you know are currently being supported by uh, the ORCA budget to address the backlog of cases. But when those resources run out, um, we will still have a need to address um, the, the, the continued um, ever rising cases. Um, and then lastly, again, as a reminder that without some greater share of local option sales tax, if all of these costs that we know about come to fruition and we are forced to fund them, we're looking at potentially a three to four mil increase, um, which would be um, uh, equal to about a 435 to $580 annual increase um, per year. 
and that's for a, an average home that has a value of about $438,000. Next slide, please. So as for our um, uh, loss negotiation status, what's happened since July 1st, uh, the negotiation teams have had five meetings that were held in July and August. Um, the 60-day negotiation period ended, technically ended August 30th, although the teams agreed to potentially two additional meetings on the 9th and the 16th to, to continue discussion and um, mediation planning. Uh, the teams did meet on um, the 9th, but not on the 16th. Currently, we have uh, a mediation date planned for uh, September 23rd, that's this Friday, um, with October 7th as a backup, a backup date, um, and the city's offered GMA as the location for mediation. Following that, um, if arbitration comes into play, the cities have proposed um, October 21st and October 28th as the dates for arbitration to begin. Next slide, please. Um, Mr. Anderson did um, a great job, I think, of um, talking about the offers that we made to the cities. Um, in those first two um, uh, negotiation sessions, which were open public meetings, we did identify our request to return to 35%, which was our pre-incorporation distribution percentage, and provided the cities with an outline of our reasons why. Um, subsequent to that, we made um, a second offer, which was really um, three offers, if you will, and, and the manager, I think, explained those. Um, in each of those offers, um, it was for a, lo a total lower distribution percentage than what we initially offered. Um, it, they were each phased in over the next 10 years. Um, we did that in an attempt to try to minimize the impact um, to the municipalities, and, but, but at the same time allow the county to begin to gradually increase um, its share of the distribution. We identified those as the straight ramp, um, the growth approach, and the gain share approach. Um, in the, the growth approach and the gain share approach, those, those offers did and were designed to keep the city municipal collection rate at 2021 level so they um, would not um, uh, lose revenue from where they currently are. And, and perhaps that would remove the necessity then for any sort of city property tax increase or city charter revisions um, in order to uh, accommodate the county receiving, um, a, a, you know, an, um, uh, increased percentage. In those two scenarios, the county really was taking the risk of there being any um, negative economic outlook. Um, the offers that we made did assume uh, a three and a half percent growth in sales tax in each of the years. Over the last 10 year cycle, the growth weight, I believe, was about 3.3%. Um, 3 um, so we, we did use three and a half. Um, we felt like these offers were um, uh, recognizing the city's concerns that had been raised around the loss of local option sales tax, but also recognized the county's need. And by the county uh, taking on um, the risk of the growth not being, um, really not being in place, we, we felt like these were really strong offers um, as, the, as the manager indicated. Um, they, they were not accepted um, or really even discussed in any great detail with the cities um, or by the cities. Next slide, please. Um, with regard to the offers that have been made to the county from the cities, um, in the first, uh, in, actually uh, it, it was in the second um, public meeting that was held with regard to the um, loss negotiations, the cities made their, uh, their first initial offer, which was 2.45%. That is about 50% less than what we are currently receiving. Um, subsequent to that, um, in August, they made a second offer 
that increased the distribution percentage um, slightly, but still resulted in the county um, not even receiving the same level of resources that we had received in the last 10-year cycle. Um, it was about $34 million in total, um, less than what had been received in the previous cycle for the county. And we did decline the offer based on the fact that it, that, um, it, it did not um, meet our needs, and in particular that it did not um, at least provide us with the same level of funding as we had in the previous 10 years. Next slide. So some takeaways from um, this, this process. Um, historically, for the county, lost revenues have been used to offset costs for countywide services. Um, in our negotiations, it's been clear that the, the cities believe that um, we should be limited in our receipt and use of local option sales tax to the portion of the county that is unincorporated. So that would be a, a very small area of uh, Fulton Industrial Boulevard um, north of I-20 and essentially the um, uh, Fulton County Executive Airport area. Um, residents are actually served by two local governments, which would be the, the county um, and the city, which is why it's a joint tax. Um, the services that we are providing are provided on a countywide basis. Um, they are different services than what cities provide. Cities provide primarily um, uh, certain municipal type services, police, fire, parks and recreation, um, planning and zoning, whereas the county is providing um, courts and uh, jails, public health, behavioral health, tax commissioner services, tax assessor services, um, uh, public, the support of the public hospital, that's one of the county's single largest um, expenses. And uh, the cities um, have also, um, well, with, with regard to the service provision, um, there's been this discussion and comments about uh, the county's proposal is to double count citizens. Um, we're not really double counting citizens. We're looking to, be, to recognize that citizens are really served by both entities. And the county serves citizens countywide, not just in this two-mile district um, uh, area on Fulton, Fulton Industrial District that remains unincorporated. Um, the general fund has provided services countywide, has always provided those services countywide, um, and will continue to do so. Um, the, uh, I guess one of the other takeaways is that uh, the cities have been um, receiving the T-SPLOST, an extra penny for T-SPLOST um, for uh, infrastructure improvements for streets and sidewalks and um, transit-related expenses that they have not had to fund out of their primary operating budgets now for the last five years and are, are currently in the second um, T-SPLOST um, cycle now receiving that same that same penny and the county um, is is not receiving those funds for the same purpose we receive a very small um, portion uh, in order to administer the T the T SPLOS program which we are required by law to do um, and again um, as we've stated in in more than one sitting now without an adjustment and an increase in our local option sales tax distribution. Um, we cannot fund all of the increases that we see coming at us with regards to public safety and public health um, without a property tax increase should we not receive some additional local option sales tax. Next slide, please. Um, and lastly, with regards to uh, next steps, as I believe the manager mentioned and I've already mentioned, we will start the mediation process on Friday, September 23rd. Um, we have some arbitration dates that have been requested um, by the cities uh, in late October. And um, lastly, if no agreement is reached between um, the county and, it, and the 50% of the cities that make up 50% of the population of the cities um, by December 31st, then the local option sales tax um, the one penny local option sales tax will sunset in Fulton County on December 31st, 2022. 
And next slide, please. Okay, well, that concludes um, my um, comments. And if you have any comments or questions, All right, we'll do our excuse best me, to Commissioner build. Morris, followed by Commissioner Ellis. Yeah, uh, just a couple of points. Um, like I guess many of you, I've received a number of of um, inquiries or complaints <laughs> from citizens, especially uh, north of my district, the north of Atlanta in my district. Um, um, just can't believe that we're asking for this huge increase, 600% uh, increase or whatever the increase was. Um, and um, it, it's really interesting to me that the citizens um, who've, who've complained and who've contacted me really don't understand um, the issues at all. Um, th this whole idea that, um, that we ought to base the distribution on population in the unincorporated area I guess partly stems from the fact that, that, that our decline occurred as citizens occurred, and I guess that the shift from us to the new cities was based on population. Um, and, and, um, and, and, and of course, we all know that um, the local option sales tax revenues were never put in the SSDs never put in the special services districts for the unincorporated areas. They were put into the general fund. And so um, this whole concept of basing it on population just, just never should have been, never really was, except to the extent, I guess, that the new cities uh, got their share on population. But, um, but as I pointed out to these citizens, um, uh, this local option sales tax revenue was always in the general fund in the county and not in the special services district. Um, it, it is unfortunate that, um, that, that uh, some of the cities are pushing this 35% offer. Um, we've talked about it uh, here, that, and you've suggested very correctly that that's off the table. That, that was an offer made and, and rejected and it's no longer on the table. Um, and it's really unfair for um, this public relations campaign to be basing, uh, basing it on this original 35% ask. Um, but the most, the most interesting thing to me uh, of the complaints I've gotten, uh, the, the inquiries I've gotten, this is, this is an example. The Fulton County Commission does not govern where I live, nor does it provide me with any services. Um, and that's a general theme I've gotten in the emails. Um, and I've responded to all of them, and I've responded with, a, um, without getting into the negotiations. Um, and uh, so the same individual responds after my response, thank you for this considered and well thought out reply. Admittedly, the county does provide services that the average city inhabitant may not consider or takes for granted. Um, and so, so that's part of the, the education process in this whole thing as to the citizenry. I think the cities understand it, <laughs> obviously, but, uh, uh, but they're, I, I don't think being terribly fair in communicating all that to the citizens. And then I guess my, my last point I've tried to make, because some people say, some people assume in, in their emails to me that the county dictates what what's gonna happen here, um, that, that you, can't, you can't take this much. You've gotta, you've gotta take less than this. Um, and I point out this is a negotiation, we've gotta agree. Um, and, and, and a couple of people have said, well, if you all don't agree, uh, let's hope that the state um, dictates something fair. Um, and we all know that the state isn't gonna dictate something fair. I think it's really important for the citizens out there and the press to the extent they're gonna cover this at all, to make it real clear that if we don't agree, then as you've suggested, Sharon, the lost goes away. And the cities, some of whom rely on 50% or more of their budgets for this, this revenue, um, and the county for the, the minor part of our general fund budget that we rely on lost for, 
um, really has to be made up in some other way. Across the board, uh, property tax cuts, and for those cities that couldn't raise their property tax millage rate, they have to cut their services like crazy. So uh, this is really a big deal that's going on, and citizens need to understand that. Um, and I hope the press will, uh, will cover this a little bit. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ellis? I want to go back and, um, and amplify uh, the fact that when the, the last time this was up for negotiation, as was noted, the, the agreement at the county level was 14.97%. It drifted down to 4.98 because we're not allowed to renegotiate during the period, correct? And when a if a new city came online, they had their they had to receive a loss distribution that was set forth in whatever the way the the agreement was was struck in 2022 in this or, or 2014 in this instance. Based on that, but the funds had to come out of the county share. Correct. Yes, there's a statutory formula for a uh, newly incorporated city to receive so, their. And I think we, you know, we've tried to say this, but it's probably worth saying again. I think some folks say, "Well, that logically makes some sense," but let's articulate why, in terms of for the for a taxpayer that's paid in for general fund services, why there when that happens why effectively their tax burden as a property taxpayer goes up on the county general fund. So walk, walk, try to walk somebody through that in, in real sort of layman's terms. Um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Ellis. Walk them through when a... So when, when, the, when, the, when the, the lost share had mm -hmm. to come out of the county general fund and be passed over to the new city, why for county general fund taxpayers at large, that meant, that event meant that their property tax burden all of a sudden went up. All right, so again, um, the primary purpose of local option sales tax is to offer um, a property tax rollback for the amount that is um, collected in local option sales tax. So when the county's portion of the local option sales tax is reduced, um, and our um, service burden is not, then we have um, less revenue to support that service burden. We still have to cur cover the service burden, so the portion of revenue that was rolling back your, your millage rate effectively gets reinstated to cover that cost that didn't get reduced, if, if that makes sense. Right, so what, but what the average citizen, I think, is struggling with is, well, when that new city was created, that reduced your service burden. It Walk did. Walk folks why that didn't reduce our service burden as respects the general fund. Um, so, um, when the city's incorporated, going all the way back, to 2006, when the city's incorporated. The county was operating um, a general fund for countywide services. Well, no, let me just ask right. it differently. So mm -hmm. the, we, we did in that, when, for those cities right now, the, I mean, for let's take the city of Southfield. Previously to becoming a city, we were operating, we were providing their fire, police, zoning, those services, right? Yes. How were those funded? Were those funded out of our general fund? They were not. They were funded out of a special taxing district. And that special taxing district was Levy funded by what, what? Who's taxpayers? Folks across the county or just? Only those within that geographic boundaries of that special taxing okay. district. And they were levied a separate tax okay. to support the operations of the special tax so district. So the county general fund and the lost dollars we applied to the general fund were not applied towards those fire and police and zoning, other city-like services in that unincorporated That's area. That's correct. So when, when the event takes place, incorporation in, in 2017, the new city's established and a share of loss has to go to that new city, that means the dollars of loss supporting the general fund go down. That's right? correct. So the, the, therefore, the amount of revenue that the county has to generate from profit, property tax revenues Goes the support up. the general fund goes up. That's correct. But the services have remained the same. That's correct. 
So over that period, that took place. So when we went into, when the counting went in in 2014, assuming this 14.9%, it drops to 4.98 4 in, in, in 2017. The estimated, it looks like the estimated sort of what we, the county would have received if that percentage had stayed at that previously negotiated amount to support the general fund, the additional funds that didn't, did not come in were about 165 million probably estimated. Um, I think it may be somewhere in that, in that range, 130. 100, 132 yeah. to date, but if right. you extrapolate it out through the end of this year, probably yes. about 160, yeah. Yeah. right? So there's a four gone. So that 160 that didn't come into the general fund, what that meant, you know, really for every citizen, right? I mean, because I think it's difficult to sort of, people look at this, this is not really a, a city versus a county issue while we're negotiating it. The law statute calls for it to support both of those general funds and for us to reach, you know, an agreement that's consistent with the way that the statute applies. So this isn't about, you know, one group winning versus the other. It really shouldn't be. It should be about coming up with an arrangement that's most beneficial for property taxpayers as a whole. Um, but so with, with the forego of that 165 million or so, what that meant for us has meant we've had to delay service expansion, delay capital projects, or charge a higher millage rate than we otherwise would have. That's correct. correct. Right, I mean, so that's the practical effect of this. And then at some point in time, you know, that continued decline catches up with you, right? And so where our, to fund our government, we, we have to, you know, we have to generate revenues. People do that through different, most governments do that through different means, really, right? It's for most local governments, it's sales tax, property taxes, and other, other associated fees, correct? Court fines and fees, Court and, fines then, and fees. Uh, fees for service, yes. So for, for us, what percentage of our, our general fund is, is now, our revenues have to be generated from property taxes? It, uh, currently it's about 85% is generated. 85%. Mm -hmm. So what, do, what percentage of the, then a sales, the sales tax benefit to us then from the general fund is only about? It's about 2%. 2%. Contrast that with what we learned in the review of the data the amount of general fund support within the cities that is sort of in the aggregate on average support? Oh, uh, they're getting in the 30, on aggregate, it's like in the 30% range. Some cities have as much as 50% of their on total On average, cost. it's about 30. Yeah. So, and I'll go back to something Commissioner Morris had, had said. I know, um, so there, and you had noted there was an original offer of 35%. These other offers, and, and I'm, I'm confused too because I, someone showed me something as early as today uh, that came out from the mayor of Johns Creek expressing that the county had an offer of 35% and that was what they were seeking. Uh, but the, that, that offer in the, that was removed and these other offers were made about August 12th, is that correct? That's correct. We so present, they've been we outstanding for about a month. Um, so it's sort of confusing as to why that particular message is, uh, continues to be communicated. Um, with a little more clarity on some of the, some of the details, I, I, and I think you, you, you noted on um, the, the three offers. Um, one of the offers, and I think it's important for folks to understand it, um, one of the offers that we made had us getting an increase, had, had the county receiving a slightly higher percentage each year over the course of 10 years, such that the county would receive in total over that 10 year period of time about 15 and a half percent. So contrast that with, you know, the agreement a few years ago, 14.9 percent. Uh, correct, that was sort of one of the, so just to put a little more real numbers to it as opposed to sort of general ramp and that sort of stuff. Um, and so when we say that, the five to, you know, that's roughly sort of a 10% differential shift over time. The, the benefit of that phasing, if you will, 
and it being stepped in the offer to um, the cities, let's say if we'd gone out in year one with an offer, say if our offer was we want to go to 15.5% right out of the great gate in year one, there, that means that redistribution would have to be shared across 15 cities, correct? That's correct. If I do my math, get rid of that 30% number and a 10% shift, if you did it all in year one, that'd probably mean about a 3 percentage budget shift for those cities if you did it all in year one. Some it could be as low as two, you know, something that range, probably two to 3.1. So that phasing means that that incremental shift, rather than being offered to be done in one year, it would be phased through over the course of 10 years. But remember, sales taxes typically grow, have grown about 3.5%, correct? Um, uh, yeah, a little less than that over the last 10 years. So the dollar figure associated with this, with it going ramping slowly up, most likely would never go down and probably would wind up still going up for, um, for those individual cities over that 10 year period. As, as long as the, the growth. Um, if, if, yeah. if growth averaged the yep. way we've seen it, realize that that could be up and down. The increment, the, the increment in the ramp up was less than the growth percent each year so that the cities right. would not be negatively affected. And, and also just one other thing that I think it's worth, um, worth noting um, when it comes to sources of revenue funding, right? I mean, a lot, and in this place is something Commissioner Morris talked about too, in terms of just folks not aware of what we do. A lot of the services that we provide are not things that people interact with, and they're, quite frankly, they're things that people don't want to interact with, right, uh, for good reason. Uh, but, you know, they're required services. We're mandated to do these things, right? And, you know, we certainly saw uh, from the men and women that were here today, um, and we know kind of the challenges that they face from a public safety standpoint and what we're dealing with there. It's got to be funded, right? And we all want it to be funded properly and be able to deliver those things effectively. But we probably don't want all that burden to be borne on property taxpayers, right? Uh, we have folks that come in and they commit crimes, they buy things and all that. There should be a sales tax benefit that should be shared for, for these services as well. Um, but the, you noted it as well that there are other sources of sales tax money that have supported the cities. Do we have any other sources of sales tax money that really benefit the county other than lost? No, the local option sales tax is sales tax is the only sales tax okay. that we collect directly. So when the county um, saw the shift in 2017 from 14.9 to 4.98, at this and so that would result in probably about 160 million dollar, you know, decline in revenue over that period of time for our general fund. Our cities outside of Atlanta were increasing, you know, we're getting an increased sales tax associated with transportation, which would net roughly about to about the end of this year, about 500 million, right? So just to contrast, right. contrast the sort of the, the benefits, which we, that, which I'll, you know, kind of remind people, and I, and I think uh, uh, Vice Chair Hausman has certainly noted this and was a key leader in it. Uh, that was a county-led effort that recognized, you know, a city need, and we recognize a transportation need throughout our county. And uh, it was a county-led effort to bring that together and get that passed. And that's resulted in effectively, you know, for those cities outside of Atlanta, and Atlanta has some similar taxes in place, $500 million in sales tax benefit, but also property tax, effective property tax relief that would have been, had otherwise been funded by property taxpayers within those individual cities. or roads, et cetera, not have been improved, correct? That's correct. Okay. So, I mean, I think those are all the, those are some of the other salient points, I think, as citizens are listening to the debate to sort of recognize that, number one, there's no 35% ask on the table, and there has not been for in excess of a month, and there have been multiple other offers on the table uh, that have recognized sort of the challenges that we face, but also the challenge that would be associated with a shift. And what, you know, I think all of us, um, I don't want to speak for all of us, but I, I think I share this sentiment that, that what all of us are, are seeking to achieve is a structure 
that is going to be beneficial for all taxpayers and for both the city and the county and to work towards a very equitable agreement. Uh, so anyway, I'll close on that. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Chair Houseman. Yes, um, thank you. And, uh, you know, I hope that the citizens that are listening um, appreciate the explanation of the different services that are provided. I'm getting those emails, too, where folks, you know, say, what does Fulton County do for me? You know, I live in Roswell, and they do everything I need. And, you know, I think that the reality is that in Fulton County, folks identify with their cities. They don't identify with the county. Um, the things that they touch every day are right in their neighborhoods, and that's their cities. And so, um, you know, it was as was stated earlier, the most of the services that we provide, especially in North Fulton, um, are not things that are um, readily noticed by, I um, mean, they take their water service for granted, for example, until they have an issue. But it's a vital service, right? Um, they certainly enjoy their library programming um, in North Fulton, where I represent. When those libraries were closed, people were very upset. Um, but it's not something that they necessarily associate with the county because it's located in their city. So I, I think this whole discussion um, and this rift, if you will, um, between us at the moment is quite unfortunate. Um, and, you know, in, when we started all the new cities back in 2005 when Sandy Springs first came online, there was a definite um, discontent, discontent with the services that the county was providing in a lot of the unincorporated areas. They felt neglected, and that was the reason the cities were formed. And so, of course, the folks that live there are very much connected to their cities. I, I really feel like in the last 15 years, we've come a long way. Um, we've worked really hard to, pr to repair those relationships meet with our cities regularly. Um, TSPLOS was one example given of, of some of the positivity that's come out in the last decade or so because of those working relationships. But I think this just highlights how fragile it really is. Um, none of us were here when the cities started. I don't know, Com Commissioner Pitts, were you here in 2005? Yes. Okay, we, one of us was here. Um, but I, you know, I worked to start one of the new cities. Um, it was an easy argument to get folks to go along with, you know, creating their own local identity. So I certainly understand it. I have to say to the public, um, while the 35% is off the table, I, this commissioner regrets it was ever offered. Um, I don't think that that helped us at all in these negotiations. I think that it just started a fight from the beginning where there didn't need to be a fight. There needed to be collaboration and to come up with an agreement. But I would also suggest to you that there's not one person up here that thinks that uh, we don't want to work this out. Uh, I think it's very important that we do come up with a solution that's equitable and fair to everyone. The reality is that we do have things that must be done for the safety, public safety of the community, especially the jail. Um, we heard a lot about that today, and that situation is not going away, and it's very expensive, and it's probably gonna cost us about $500 million. So that's the reality. Um, mental health issues are also a, a big looming problem that we, we know we're facing, that we have not addressed adequately. We've made improvements, but have not addressed it adequately. And then we have this other looming issue with hospital services. So, you know, those needs are real, just like the needs of the cities are real. Nobody wants loss to go away. Certainly don't want it to increase the tax burden to our communities. Um, but it is far more an impactful component of the city's budgets. We have to recognize that. We could, we, we absorbed you know, our loss, and when the city of South Fulton came online, it was difficult, but we managed it. It is a lot um, easier for the county to do that than it is for the city, so I think we need to recognize that as well. But anyway, I, I know we're gonna have mediation 
beginning on Friday. And there's a big public meeting tonight that um, I'm sure Fulton County is definitely going to be the bad guy. And again, I regret that for our community. There's, it really doesn't benefit any of us to be having a public argument like this. And I certainly encourage the members of the committee here to do everything that we can to enter into an agreement that works for the county and for the cities, because the citizens are expecting us to do that. Commissioner Natalie Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just really quickly, um, Commissioner Morris and Commissioner Hausman mentioned that their constituents don't really know about the services, but I want to tell you that a lot of them really do because I've run into many of them, some who say they go to church with Commissioner Morris and he sings and plays his instrument so well. And they say, well, how can we get these services? I said, the services we provide are everywhere. They're not just in one place. And they say, well, we see you talking about the services in Atlanta, and but we don't see that in where we live. So I tell them all the time, there are these services don't just stop in Atlanta. They don't just cover Southwest Atlanta. They are entirely for Fulton County. So. They do know and they do want those services. There are many people who have lost their jobs up north the same way that there are people who lost jobs in southwest Atlanta. And so they understand that we do have those services. Some may need to be reminded. Some may be new to this. And um, we just need better communication. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner. Other, other comments or questions? No, thank you all very much. Thank you. So, Madam